I first encountered the song Chen De Ring in 2016 when Paul Augustine of the Penang Island Jazz Festival and Penang House of Music invited me to perform this song written by Jimmy Boyle with his son, James Boyle. I completely, utterly, absolutely fell in love with this song and I remember um, meeting my band and was so excited telling them about the song that I just learned and asked them to help me rearrange it so we could perform it. And since then, I've been performing this song Chandering live in various stages, you know, in India, even in all parts of Malaysia. And I started wanting to find out a little bit more about the story of Jimmy Boyle and who he is. And to my surprise, um, he was one of the most prolific composers in Malaysia and he had written close to 350 songs, some of which might be super familiar to you because uh, you might have learned them in school like Putra Putri Negara Jaya Know that one? And amazing beautiful songs like Jau Jau Gemarem Bulan um, and many 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 others I was surprised that this person who had such a big role to play in the history of Malaysia wasn't more well known. And I was frankly a little ashamed being a Penang person myself and a musician that I didn't know anything about who Jimmy Boyle was. Jimmy Boyle was born in Penang and he has always loved music. And he, he learned the piano from his mother, who was also a piano teacher in, in Penang. And I think as he grew up, he got really active into like the scouting movement, you know, um, playing music. And during the Japanese occupation, unfortunately, he uh, became a prisoner of war and was interned uh, for two years in the 1940s. Sad to say he was abused and tortured as a prisoner and one of his jobs actually was to clear corpses from the executioner's room and some of them who were his friends. Actually, uh, whenever we have time, uh, he always tell me everything, you know. He talk about whenever we have time. And he told me also he pick up he pick up rice to eat from the drain also. You know, every day he see rice uh, uh, in the drain and uh, he pick it up, wash it, dry it, and then dip it there, uh, collect there, and then he will eat. Uh, he will keep himself alive. Uh. He was very impressive. Very good looking, and then very good looking, and uh, uh, has a has a way to convince people and all that. And after the Japanese left, um, he returned back to his alma mater, Saint Saviour's Institution in Penang, and he became a teacher and someone very much beloved by his students. Soon after that, he got a call from. Um, the British officers that were holding a dinner and a gala at a Rani Mead Hotel asking him, him if he could uh, put together a band and play some music. Now we used to play Sandy Croft Leaf Centre, uh, Rani Mead Hotel, um, as I say, Minden Barracks, which is now University of Malaysia Science, right? He used to play RAF Butterworth to go down there. Uh, including the Mar Mariners Club or something like that is in um, Esplanade, right? And Jimmy was a fantastic guy. I turned around and said, hey, I, I've got to go to Ipoh for such as would you like to come? Or I've got to go to KL, would you like to come? So I said, yeah, okay, fine. My father didn't mind because everywhere, if I went to Jimmy, it's fine, I'm going with that out. Because Jimmy was 21 years older than me, that's all, right? But he treated me like a son. Listening to stories from um, his wife, Lini Boyle, and his former bassist, Yi Fuxin, Jimmy sounded like the kind of guy who like, had inspiration strike him anywhere and everywhere, and um, music was in his veins. 
Gendering because, as I said, he told me he wrote it in 1943. That was when I was born. And I love the song because it really is very, very nice. The way he's written it, the chord work and everything else for that gendering. As I said to you, suddenly something will inspire me to start writing it. It's just like, you know, gendering. He tore out his uh, cigarette box or, or packet and started writing music on it, right? And the thing is, you cannot turn around and tell somebody, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. It just comes in naturally, right? That's why I say he was a genius in his time. And even now, nobody has ever been able to copy what he's done. He was someone who loved his country so much. If you look at his catalogue of songs that he wrote, there were so many of a patriotic nature. And one of them, Kemagahan Nagaraku, was actually played right after Nagaraku on August 31st, 1957. And he said that this was the proudest professional moment of his life. And I'm just sitting here today, I'm just, I, I just wish that more people knew of him and more people knew of his music. Let him uh, be remembered as a Malaysian. As a Malaysian and also of the patriotic music he, uh, he contributed. Music he contributed and will still continue to be uh, patriotic. Who is my father to me? Well, he was uh, somebody who um, who filled up his shoes very well. Yeah, and uh, I think he did what was given to him during his time in the country and for his family. And one that I think um, struggled uh, internally. He had a lot of struggles internally from because from, and now I can say that because I look at the scores because I'm I'm looking at his, he has got tons of piano scores. Anybody who writes that much has certainly got a lot of problems. Anyway, I mean, yeah, I mean uh, coming from a musician, you, you will see right, the greatest art comes from the, you know, the greatest suffering. Mozart, Beethoven, he was proud to be Malaysian. Uh, he contributed his life writing songs for people. I mean, he was a very giving person. The happiest people in the world are always the people who give the most. first listened to Chandering, it wasn't just the haunting melody that got to me, it was the ambiguity and poetry in the words. And even though on the surface it sounds like a love song, I've always felt that there was so much more to it and maybe there was a backstory and, and this song is one of beauty but beauty tinged with a lot of pain and longing and um, I really wanted to express that through my, my band's interpretation of the song. And when it came to creating the music video, I was very fortunate to have a team of amazing creatives to work with. Uh, Chris Lim is the creative director and Daniel Adams is the set designer and principal photographer. Um, and when I spoke to Chris, he said that the ocean for him always evoked a lot of um, opposite emotions, uh, strength and gentleness, uh, violence and serenity, all together. And in Daniel's case, he mentioned that he felt the same way like me, you know, that this song had a really haunting quality to it and things were just not as it seemed on the surface. So when we wanted to create this music video, I wanted to make sure that we honour um, the true spirit of the song while also giving it a fresh take um, um, that belonged in today's world. And for example, like I talked earlier about Jimmy Boyle's band, the Runny Meat Swing Tats. If you look at old photos of the Runny Meat Swing Tat, they were all in like super dashing white uh, suits with little bow ties. And when we worked with uh, the stylist Sarah from Hello Styler, um, she made sure to pick up on these cues and put my band in similar modern interpretations of these white suits and bow ties. Um, and Daniel 
spoke about the surreal quality to the song. Like there's a mix of reality and fantasy, which is something that I've always felt strongly about. Your version is, uh, let's just put it this way, is a very surreal. It's a very surreal version from my point of view. Lah, because you have already stripped away the harmony, you have stripped away the complexity of the chords. And because you are a vocalist, so you let your vocal uh, breathe and you let your vocal you know, soar above the harmony. So by taking away the complexity of the harmony, you gave a life to the melody, which is your forte because you are a vocalist. But if I'm the pianist there, of course, I would have made things so complicated, lah, you know. Uh, but do I like it? I love it. It's, it's, it's a great version and I think your band and, and you have done a, a wonderful job with it. I, I think my dad would have been, been proud. And I am incredibly, incredibly honoured that the Boyle family has allowed me to reinterpret this song, Chandering, give it my own little spin and share it with the world.